Hello and welcome to the next in our series of at-home interviews with chief executives from the technology sector. Uh, I'm Mike Drew, partner and global head of the technology practice at the executive search firm Odgers Burnson. I'm delighted to be joined by Mike Etling, chief executive of the global software firm Unit4. Uh, prior to Unit4, Mike's career included president of SAP Success Factors and the CEO of Northgate Arinzo. Mike, a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I hope you are doing well in lockdown. Uh, Mike, in this series of CEO discussions, uh, we've been exploring how our <laughs> leaders are uh, adapting to sort of unprecedented disruption of COVID-19. So I'd really like to start here and, and ask how you've been leading at Unit 4 during this period of disruption and what, perhaps what successful behaviours that you've seen from leaders around you as well. Yeah, so I think agility has been really key. We were very fortunate that as we started shifting to home working from around about the 15th of March, that we had all the tools and technology. <clears throat> so we were rolled out on Teams, we had everyone on a laptop estate, and it, for us it was more about hit the video button as opposed to new technology. So then we, we sort of got into a really important discussion. I remember the leadership meeting quite vividly where my Asia Pacific leader talked about stop panicking, don't, think, don't get bogged down in the change and the crisis and everything. Find your new normal, that's what we've done in Singapore, find it, find it quickly and get on with it. <clears throat> and I think we did two, maybe three really critical things. We did that really quickly, said, right, the new normal is we're working from home, business has to continue, there will be undoubtedly a recession, let's manage our business on that basis. So to do that, we need to build a very different defensive model, but we're also gonna be very offensive at the same time. So, you know, a couple of things we did, originally our heritage is Dutch. We said, no one in the company does scenario planning. Budget is the budget. And yes, there might be gaps, but figure out how we get to the budget. Oh, and by the way, what are all the offensive things you can do to improve our situation as we come out of this? But we're also gonna do a whole lot of defensive things and we're not gonna to wait to see what happens in the numbers. We're gonna do them immediately. You know, so we're going to build all of these dikes and we're not going to spend our time trying to guess the size of the wave, whether it's a tsunami or hurricane which washes over the dikes. If you think about um, agile leadership um, being able to pivot to, to the scenario that, that you face and also being an authentic leader, um, where have you seen that manifest itself in, in Unit 4? I think transparency and, and empathy has been the single most important aspects a leader has to demonstrate through this, through this crisis. We went into, you know, I maybe did a once a month email or in communication to the whole company. I've been doing it once a week through this. You know, we had maybe a monthly extended leadership team conference call, we now have a, a weekly one. Um, <clears throat> my leaders have been doing large amounts of check-in, coffee chat, you know, Zoom coffees type sessions, you know, and touching every single one of our people and starting again <clears throat> through this process. So I think empathy and transparency and communication has just been ratcheted up enormously. <clears throat> and I think the other thing which I've noticed, we obviously have our own product which measures, measures engagement and pulses people and does pulse engagement real time. What we've noticed is that leaders are, of, the, the rate at which leaders are requesting feedback from their peers and teams has gone dramatically up during this period as well. Mm. And when, when you think about balancing well-being with that high level of communication and, you know, that we talked about this sort of idea of Zoom gloom and, you know, perhaps being online all the time and being easily accessible all the time, particularly via video. How, how are you balancing that in, internally to make sure that the well-being of your employees is, is also clearly yeah. still at the forefront? 
so that was kind of part of this find our new normal approach we had where we said, okay, it is what it is. Everyone's at home. Now let's focus on the well-being of, the, of our people. And within a week, we launched a program internally called Fit For You. And I kicked it off with my trainer and I doing a Zoom fitness session. And every day there is a somebody internally, not external people, doing fitness or yoga or meditation. We, we have focused very heavily on the wellness of our people. And we're now mandating that people take vacation time. We can do that because last year when I came on board, I abolished the concept of fixed vacation. So people can take as much as they need at unit four. There's oh, really? Okay. No caps as long as you get the job done. Yeah. So we're saying to people, you must take three days in May. You must take five days in June. <clears throat> and there's, of course, there's not the dynamic of, well, I'm going to, you know, then I've only got 10 days left. I don't want to take it or whatever, because you can take whatever you need um, at any point in time. So that's also uh, a big focus. When you reflect on how you're operating in this moment during this COVID period, what are the things from an operational perspective might you take forward into this sort of post-COVID era? Yeah, I think it's um, <clears throat> a really interesting point. We started about uh, two weeks ago, we set up a, what we initially called a return to work task force. And, and then we decided to change the name because people have been working really hard. This isn't about return to work. And, you know, we play a lot on the for you as part of our logo and unit four, you know, we said, and then a lot of people are talking about a new normal. Um, and we can, we came up with this, actually, let's define a better normal for you. Mm. Um, because I think what comes out of this is an opportunity to really define a better normal for people and people, you know, our people who work for us. <clears throat> so we're surveying all our people and it's quite interesting. We're getting really interesting data perspectives on whether people want to return to a physical work environment or not. We're also getting really interesting perspectives on, you know, what we're seeing from legislative in, environments. And one of the things we concluded is that this is too complex. If you look at all of the legislation and all the things coming out, country by country, state by state, people's individual preferences, you're going to end up with manuals this thick, trying to define a return to a physical environment. <clears throat> and then our people are saying to us, well, we've actually figured out some interesting ways of now balancing work with our family. You know, we get up, we do some work, then we go spend time with the family in the morning. And we actually quite like this. Um, and we've also seen productivity increases. So our engineering function productivity has gone up significantly. Mm. Um, so we've concluded that actually the, the, the better normal is going to be work from home. And we're then going to have a different type of office footprint where people go in to interact, to have meetings, to bring clients in for briefings, to engage. But we are actually going to see a shift to a default being work from home. How, how have you experienced and how have you sort of tried to develop a, a greater sense of purpose for Unit 4 during this period? Yeah, you know, I've been on record lots of times with saying getting the purpose right is 75% of leadership. And the great companies and great leaders are really good at establishing purpose. <clears throat> so I, you know, I think this is a fundamental thing, crisis or no crisis. And that purpose really drives through into how we treat our people, trying to build an extraordinary people experience for our own people in the company. So that, you know, having established that purpose and really made it part of the fabric with our values last year, really, I think, was crucial to how we dealt with the crisis when it came along. Because there was no debate or discussion over, is it layoffs or do we want to do layoffs last or whatever? It's we are people-based business. We're about in business for people. We need to look after our people first and everything else will follow, which is one of our values. That, that concludes uh, part one of this interview and uh, we'll be back shortly for part two.